Today we're going to be learning rational exponents. A rational is just another way of saying fractions because all rational numbers can be written as fractions. So you know that a normal or you're fairly familiar with a normal exponent such as that 3 squared and that equals 3 times 3 which in fact equals 9. And today we're going to be focusing on the cases when the exponent is not a whole number, in this case it's a whole number, but sometimes it can appear to be a fraction or it can be written as a fraction. Okay, so what do you do when there's a fraction in the exponent? So you need to remember two things. I guess you can combine it into one thing. The numerator of the fraction tells you the exponent, tells you the exponent of the number, and the denominator of that fraction tells you the root of that number. Okay, so uh, when the exponent is 1, like here, when the exponent is 1, that's just the same thing as the original one, right? It's not really interesting when the exponent is 1. So even in fractions, when the exponent is 1, you don't really need to worry about that exponent. Okay, so let's focus on the root. Let's focus on the de denominator here. So the 2 is in the denominator, so that means it's going to be a square root. Remember, a square root is a root with an index of 2. It's going to be a square root of this number. And if you want to be really specific, you can say that this is raised to this exponent, which is 1. It was really the same thing. Oops, sorry. Square root of 3. Or you can say that this is the square root of 3 raised to the 1 power. So you can do the exponent the exponent first, and then do the root, or you can do the root first, and then do the exponent. The order doesn't really matter here. You can either do the exponent first and then the root, or the root first and then the exponent. But when the exponent is 1, as it is in this case, you don't really need to worry about the exponent. Both of these are just going to be equal to square root of 3. And in fact, you don't even uh, write the 2 when it's a square root. You just say square root of 3. So you're going to get the same answer for both of these. And this actually works for other numbers as well. Let's say we have 4 to the 1 fifth power. And again, the numerator is going to tell you the exponent. The denominator tells you the root. So you can focus on the, the numerator or the denominator that is not 1, because when it is 1, it's not really interesting. So the denominator is 5 here, so that means it's going to be the fifth root of 4. Okay, and the numerator being 1, you can write the 1 here, you can write the 1 out here. Okay, but you, again, you don't need to worry about the exponent when it equals 1. This is, it's the same thing as not having there, or not having the exponent there. It doesn't mean that there's no exponent, it just means you don't need to explicitly write it out. Okay, so the answer for this would be fifth root of 4. So once you get comfortable with this, I'm just going to write different cases here. You'll notice that that's just going to equal the square root of 10, right? The denominator tells you the root, and the numerator is just 1, so you don't need to really worry about the numerator. Here it's going to be the cube root of 7. The denominator tells you the root. And here it's going to be the sixth root of 4. 
Okay, so you see what the fraction exponent does to the number. The denominator of that fraction uh, gives you the root of that number. Now let's look at some cases when the numerator is not 1. So let's look at uh, 7 to the power of 3 fourths. Actually, not, let's not do 7 here. Let's, let's try 6. 6 to the power of 3 fourths. And this time the numerator is not 1. So the fourth root is still going to be there. But we have the power of 3. So you can either raise this to the power of 3 like this. Or you can, oh, let me write this in a different order. You can first raise the 6 to the third power and then do the fourth root of that. Either way is fine. You can do the exponent first and then the root, or you can do the root first and then the exponent. Okay, so uh, in this case though, doing it this way is going to allow you to simplify better because you can evaluate uh, 6 cubed inside the fourth root. So it's going to be the fourth root. Inside that fourth root, we're going to have 6 cubed. And 6 cubed equals 216. And then from here, um, I don't think you can simplify this any further, but if you would like, you can prime factor this. And you can't really simplify this here, but let's just leave it at that for now. And that would be your answer. But you can't get that answer as easily if you do it this way, if you do the power outside of the root. If you do the root first and then you do the power, you will eventually get the same answer. But the you can't, it's really hard to simplify this. It's hard to get there from there. Okay, so uh, you can play around with doing the exponent first or the root first, depending on the number. Let me show you another example. If I have 16 uh, to the power of, let's do 3 fourths again. 16 to the power of 3 fourths. And again, that's you can either do the root first, fourth root of 16, and then do that cubed, or... You can do the exponent first and then do the root. And in this case, you'll see that it's easier to do the uh, root first because you can find the fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16 is 2. And if you raise 2 to the third power, then that becomes 8. Right, so this is your answer. 6 to the 3 fourth power becomes 8. But it's harder to get there when you do the exponent first. So you have to do 16 cubed, which is going to be a fairly large number. So what we get, it's going to be fourth root of 4096. And it's much harder to do the fourth root of this big number here. And if you do that on the calculator, you'll get 8 eventually. But it's not as intuitive as this step is. So in this case, doing the, the root first was more convenient. Whereas in this case, in this case, doing the exponents first was more convenient. So you can play around and think, should I do the root first or to, should I do the exponent first to simplify that? But you see, that the when you have a rational exponent, the denominator becomes the root and the numerator becomes the exponent. Okay, so very quickly, let me just write out a few examples that you can do this with. So 2 to the uh, 2 thirds power, um, 8 to the to fifth power, 27 to the two thirds power, let's see, 9 
to the one half power. And let's uh, do these very quickly, evaluate these very quickly. Okay, so let's start from two to the two third power. Uh, again, you can do the root first or the exponent first. So you can either do the root first, cube root of two, and then square that, or you can do square it first and then do the cube root of that. And you'll see that it's easier to do it this way in this case, because you can't simplify that, but you can't simplify this. This becomes cube root of four. Okay, how about the next one? You can either do the fifth root of eight and then square that or you can do eight squared and then do the fifth root of that okay and again i think in this case it's easier to do it this way because you can't simplify this one uh, let's have or let's simplify that eight squared is 64. okay so that would be our answer here Next one, you can do the cube root of 27 and then square that, or you can do 27 squared and then do the cube root of that. Okay, in this case though, this way would be easier because you can take the cube root of 27. Right? Cube root of 27 is three and three squared is nine, right? Whereas if you do it this way, you'll have to do 27 squared inside. That's going to be 27 squared, 729. And it's harder to find the cube root of 729. Right? So the first way, this way was easier. And that's our answer. And lastly, the exponent or the numerator of the exponent is one. So we just need to worry about the root here. That's going to be the square root of nine, which is going to equal three. Okay, so I, I hope that uh, you became more familiar with rational exponents or fraction exponents here. Just remember that the numerator represents the exponent and the denominator represents the root. And the order of doing the exponent first or the root first uh, technically, it doesn't really matter, but depending on the situation, one way is more convenient than the other.